Hello everybody, Peter of England bringing you another video concerning Weirbank and the protocols and the techniques that are involved in you satisfactorily being able to pay off your debts. And that word is most uh, important because it is your debts that Weirbank is there to help you pay off, not to help you acquire new goods and services. Why I'm making this video today is that there are a lot of new people coming on board who don't know the history of Weirbank and haven't probably studied uh, the YouTube videos that are on this channel and so have very, very poor recollection of the momentum that initially was Weirbank and the, um, the necessity of the formulas that we put in place to ensure that we conduct ourselves and show that you conduct yourself as, as um as honourably as you possibly can, given the enemy against you, with the process of trying to get the, the debt eradication uh, off your back. So this toxic debt that has been poured onto society by the banking institutions, funded by obviously the tax dollars that the government force you into, into paying them, it means that there is a, there's a circular merry-go-round here whereby, for example, in the United States, there are around about 545 individuals that are responsible for controlling 320 million and the 545, which are broken down roughly, uh, I think it's about 435, 435 in Congress, 100 in the Senate, plus the nine uh, Supreme Court justices, bring us into around about that. I'm not sure whether I've included the speaker in that, but those people are responsible for everything. They're responsible for the national debt, which in the United States, for example, is currently running at around about 32 trillion, which means for every individual in the United States, that's around about $90,000 they owe you, not you owe them. You haven't spent it, you've earned it. You have earned that, and what they've done is they've hypothecated you into debt into the future. They, in effect, had you signing checks that they will never be able to pay and holding you liable for the pay down on it. So, for those of you who understand a little about the nature of money and the fabrication of money out of thin air, uh, as is the, the case these days, then you will understand, obviously, what I'm saying. For those of you who don't understand quite the, the mechanics of this, this money for nothing or this helicopter money, then please go along and educate yourself a little. Um, and this is the, the, the rationale behind this video today, because many people are coming and saying to us, for example, uh, why is there the necessity for us to produce the promissory note and to hand it over to Weirbank? And don't forget, Weirbank only acts as the custodian of that. You are a private banker. You are acting as such. We are giving you that credibility and we are giving you that association. So that promissory note, in effect, is just stored away in a pigeonhole. It's got your name on it. And in effect, you are writing down or drawing down on that promissory note. It is different in a way because it protects you and it gives you sole responsibility and creative ability over your own money and your own financial affairs and makes you more mature and responsible instead of the high street route where you go down to the bank with your cap in your hand and your pretend oh, sorry and the bank would have you believe that you have given them nothing so when you sign the document for the loan when you sign the document for the finance for the mortgage they would have you believe you contributed nothing, but with your signature, with that one stroke of the pen, and the pen with Weirbank and the bank is mightier than the sword, with that one act with your pen, you create money. Okay? And so that goes into the bank's ledger, not as a liability, because they supposedly lent you money, it's going out the door as or stays in the bank should I say and out of your door it's in their their vaults now as an asset and so in this Alice in Wonderland 2.0 version of reality everything that the bank does not have is its balance sheet it's on its balance sheet as an asset so you've got to begin to understand the workings of this 
And so Weir Bank is primarily there, not only as a facilitator to debt, debt removal, but also there to help you educate yourself. Another question commonly asked, why can't I have a, um, a, a check from Weir Bank and why can't I just pay it into my account? Then with that, I can pay for my credit card, I can pay for uh, the rent, I can pay for local taxes, state taxes, etc. Fine. Now, the reason that isn't allowed, for two reasons. One, the banking organisations will never allow Weir Bank to play in the same should we say, in the same clubhouse as them. They look at Weirbank as a pariah. They look at Weirbank as something as a challenge to the system and to obviously their monopoly, which is total. Yeah? So that is why they would never allow a Weirbank check to come into their, their facility and then to have that credited through the SWIFT system or through banks into, their, their, in your, into your account. They like to keep total control within the family system and the structure which is either the Bank of International Settlements running the banks in Europe through the ECB and the Bank of England in England and the Federal Reserve in the United States. It's one big happy family sitting around the table, basically not worried about who made what that day because the profits are all cut up and handed over to the criminal element of the pot picket, the, the pick, <laughs> The pocket pickers, yeah, or pickpockets that have stolen the money from you through the course of a day or a week or a year or uh, an investment century. So you must remember and begin to remember that just because the payee or the creditor that you send the check to says they won't accept that form of payment or they make some other aspersion about we're bank's integrity or the fact it's not a bank, well, who cares? Yeah? What you've done with the we're bank check is you've tendered payment. If you're in the United States, please go onto the Cornell University website or just type in UCC 3, Article 603, Tender of Payment. And it's quite specific what it says there that you are tendering a payment and if the payee or the creditor is refusing to accept the tender, then to the degree of the debt obligation, there is no further liability. So it is not for the bank to unilaterally decide that it is higher than the entire commercial structure and financial structure of, of global finance and reparations by just deciding that it won't process because it doesn't like the idea of we're bank. What you've got to start to do is to collectively come together with two or three people or educate yourself a little bit by standing up to the judge, by standing up to the bankers and say, no, I'm not going to stand for that. You're obligated. So, for example, have a look at what's called the Uniform Rules of Collection. 522. That stipulates for all banks and all banking transactions that the bank, when it is in receipt of a cheque, and a cheque can be written on anything, it can be written on a table napkin, it can be written on the side of a cow, or a football, or, or uh, I don't know, your, your, your shirt or t-shirt. As long as it's got a certain amount of information on it, it's val valuable and it's processable. And that's all the banks need to know. So if they're refusing then to send that cheque, that tender of payment to Weir Bank so that we can clear it, what is that telling you? Do they not want the money or are they just practicing what's called financial apartheid? Yeah. So in this woke world that we live in now, start looking at it from that perspective. There's the LBQD, all the letters of the alphabet movement. There is Black Lives Matter. There is Antifa. There's the transgender um, uh, medical controversy uh, about um, puberty blockers for children, etc. So all of this is in discussion. Why is there no discussion on, on the alteration or making the banking system and the, the debt eradication system a fairer perspective for you? So that's mainly to try and highlight what's changed since last time when Weir Bank has been or was doing what it's been doing. And what's slightly changed is the degree of overt 
corruption, disdain and arrogance that the markets and the politicians are, are, are showing unto you now. You are the people who make the laws. The GDP of the country, no matter which country you're in, is born or created by the sweat of your brow, not by theirs. And these politicians on both sides of the aisle, and if we use the Conservatives and the Labour Party in England, and if we use the, the uh, Republicans and the Democrats in the United States, how come they all say they disagree that there should be a war? They disagree that there should be higher taxes. They disagree that people should have to, um, uh, uh, I don't know, do many, many things. That the Medicare, for example, that the payments that should get higher. They disagree with all this, but still, what happens is, you get it. So, they, they must inherently either be inconsequential to it happening, or be actively campaigning for it. And they vote it through, time after time. They say they don't want war in Afghanistan. They don't want war in Iraq. They don't want trouble in Syria or Lebanon or in the Ukraine. But they vote these policies through and you get poorer and they get richer. They're career politicians only interested in their own interests and the vested interests of the people who pay them and they lobby uh, the lobbyists that encourage them to pass laws which are totally contrary and morally reprehensible to all the citizens, not just maybe you as an individual. So that having been said, um, Weir Bank ultimately is an education process. It's trying to make you aware of the inequity of the system and try to have ways to change it. So the two aspects of what Weir Bank is offering. The checkbooks were the first things that appeared and they are still your first port of call. But what we are trying to show you now is there are various ways of operating here. And the biggest thing is you have to get better educated. And to that extent, I'm going to put a couple of videos up over the next week or so, which will explain more fully your, your, uh, your basic rights and the integrity that blocks you uh, in the system. And the integrity, I mean, is that your previous naivety, your previous blind acceptance and the belief that the people in power were there and were trustworthy and were genuinely engaged in some type of public service for your best interest is a complete crock of shit. They have no interest in you whatsoever. These are just egos on crack. Yeah, they will do whatever they need to do to further their best interests. They sleep well at night and do not have you in mind, your family or community in mind. And the proof of this is just look at the wake behind the ship. Everything they've done for you historically has always led to the same result. You can hardly pay your rent. You're living from check. A monthly check to monthly check and the credit just gets higher and higher. So that's what I want you to start becoming aware of. So why I am emphasizing this today is that I want to offer two things and this is an ongoing thing. It's been done reasonably successfully in the past and when I say reasonably successfully it all comes down to the degree of tenacity that the individual is prepared to put in this to fight their case. You can only fight the case with knowledge. So, for example, what type of knowledge am I talking about? I'm going to give you an example now, and it's coming from the Bills of Exchange Act 1882 for the people in the United Kingdom and for the people in the Commonwealth countries like Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Um, you've got your own version of this. And in the United States, um, the, the common law... Um, the common law um, statutory derived instruments are there to prove the same thing. So with the debt assumption service, you now operating as a private banker can either create your own funds, just as the Federal Reserve does as a private bank, just as the Bank of England and the Bank of France do as private banks incorporated with VAT numbers or um, what you call uh, financial tax numbers, 
you're in the same position as them. So if they say that they can do it but you can't, you have to start asking yourself why and what do they fear. So under the Bills of Exchange Act in the United Kingdom and for even if you're in America, no matter where you are, just type in Bills of Exchange Act 1882 UK.gov forward slash I think legislation uh, and it should come up. And so there's, there's three main sections I'd like you to look at. It's section 15, section 42 and section 68. In the, the preamble to that act you will see various definitions about acceptance, bill, promissory note and you will see that Private banker or banker is actually referred to there as anyone that conducts the business of banking, whether incorporated or not. Now, what you've got to remember is that you are a human being, not a legal fiction and not a person. There is nowhere in the United States law or in the Commonwealth law for the United Kingdom and its previous colonies that refer to what's called the Person Act. Nowhere does it define what a person is. You're just assumed to be a person. Have a look at Article 6 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights to, to um, get a, a slight explanation on this because it says that you have the right to be treated as. Okay, but also therefore um, you have the right not to be treated as, which I would suggest for those people going forward now with We Are Bank that you, you need to be very much aware that your status within the court system, which is what really is the enforcement arm of the banks, is all dependent, and I'm going to go into more details on this when we do a webinar and in future videos, the dependency here is that you are an asset. Yeah? You are an asset on the farm and all of the law is ecclesiastical in nature and therefore from the time that you were born to the time you leave and depart this mortal coil, you are supposedly owned and therefore as you have a value when you're born, not only um, for the goods and services that will have to be, should we say, um, bought or supplied to get you through to the age of majority, but also then from the age of majority and prior to that in part, what you will be generating up until the time you leave. So you have a value. The moment the livestock hits the pasture, it's got a value. And this is what's deemed to be your value. Okay, so it's who owns what. Is there a trust in operation or is there not a trust in operation? The answer is there is a trust and therefore you need, <clears throat> you need to enter any of the actions that are brought against you you need to handle them, not in magistrates, not in the district court, not in the county court, not in the high court. You need to insist from day one that your case is managed through the chancery division of your relevant court system. If it's not in chancery, you're going to get fucked four ways from Sunday. You're entering into their closed pagan roman courier magic circle and the moment you give your name your address and your date of birth you have acceded to the three major elements of the papal bulls issued by the catholic church over the centuries you're locked in you've admitted it you've signed the piece of paper and there's no going back so i want to make you aware for the people who are using the checks, who want to go and enter into the debt assumption program, this is how we fight it. It's biblically simple. The devil and Lucifer and all its horde makes things complicated. The truth, by definition, has to be simple. It can be as easy as it was with the Christ. He stands there and basically says "What to Pilate, well, what do you accuse me of? It is simple and if it's looking to be complicated and people are offering you complicated methods and demanding high amounts of money for it, then they're probably just egos out there to, to make money from you and lead you down to a path of perdition. So stick with us, pass this video on to people who will, will, will appreciate it um, 
And just to finalize these, these three parts that I touched on, go and look at section 15, section 42, and section 68. Just to let you know the, the power that you have, even when you're operating in normal statutory land and you haven't progressed or uh, paddled your boat across to the other side into chancery land, which is the law of equity. And if you've got a mortgage, you know you've got a legal title holding with the bank and you've got an equitable title or equity in the property. Therefore, by definition, it's a trust. The judge can't argue it at all. So hoik it, get anything to do with the property into chancery. So on that point, I'm going to say that uh, also it's possible if you get a bill from uh, the, the local authority, if you're in the United Kingdom to pay for your council tax, your poll tax, if you get a bill from your network provider, if you get a bill from the utility company, you can also do what's called a conditional acceptance. Have a look on this channel. I'll try and put the link in down below if I remember. Uh, it's called acceptance for value and there's an indication there of how you can receive a bill and you can accept it and create, make, make yourself in, into what's called a holder in due course. Once you become a holder in due course, you're holding the credit yourself. It turns you from a debtor into a creditor. And don't forget what a bill is, a bill for taxes, a bill for services that you haven't engaged in a contractual form for. It's just a, a hiking exercise. It's just them attempting to load something onto you, which is uh, all based on propositions and presumptions and the assumption that you'll just pay it. But why should you? So very quickly, section... Um, People who've got the We're Bank checkbooks, this is really for you now, for people who are going to soon be receiving their books. Now, this is also for you. These give you the option. So if you're not embracing the debt assumption service, that's one thing. This will help you, and I would suggest you either get yourself a, um, a, like a, a rubber stamp with some of these, these, um, these, these sections written on, and you can stamp on the back of your check, or you can write this in freehand. And all you've got to do is refer to We're Bank and Peter of England. So I am now deliberately putting myself in the crosshairs. I am basically saying that if Jesus came to take away the sins of the world, then We're Bank through Peter of England, is coming to take away its debts. And debts are usually equated with sin. Debts are usually equated with guilt or a liability or a social admonition. So this is what we're looking and we are proposing that you should attempt, not attempt to do, but you should do. So I'll look at, read to you, section 15 from the Bills of Exchange Act 1882. A drawer of a bill may insert the name of a person to whom the holder, that's the creditor, yeah, may resort in case of need. And that is to say, if the bill or the check is dishonored by non-acceptance or non-payment, this person is referred to as a referee in case of need. So, one thing I can suggest you do, write on the back of your check, whether you're in Australia, Canada, United States, or the UK, or anywhere else where our books are, write in section 15 of what either the Bills of Exchange Act is for the UK, or your equivalent in your country. The next one you should also look at is non-acceptance of a bill or promissory note, which is tendered. For those in the United States, and I don't know what it is in the other countries, apart from section 42 for the Bills of Exchange Act, in the United States, it's UCC 3603, refusal of a tender, okay? Because this was put in as good law to prevent people being vilified or given a bad name in the community by people who maybe had a grudge or um, a, a, a concern about them and they wanted to punish them or, uh, or, um, or basically make them look as not being credit worthy, the person that you're attempting to pay could just simply refuse. And if he did that, to the extent of the obligation, then no longer would you be obligated to make the payment. So that's a section 42 clause. Finally, section 68, and this is a very good one because 
It is called a payment for honor supra protest, which means that any individual can intervene when a bill or a check has not been honored or paid and he can step in and make payment on your behalf. I will read payment for honor supra protest where a bill has been protested for non-payment that's like your landlord or the bank or your utility company, local tax, IRS, HMRC, I don't care who it is, when they protest for non-payment, any person, quote, may intervene and pay it supra protest for the honor of any party liable thereon. So, right on the back of the check, pay it for honor, supra protest, as per section 68 of the Bills of Exchange Act, 1882, Peter of England, Weir Bank. You can put an address on there if you wish, but that will be sufficient because that will stand you in good stead because when they take you to court now, not only have you got the honor of having tendered payment, you have also got the very good full house of cards would show you even gave someone, sorry, you even gave the name of an independent referee or third party that is prepared to take over that debt. And with world debt escalating, becoming more and more toxic by the week, and the United States, when Barack Obama came into office, the United States national debt stood at 16 trillion. Now it's at 32 trillion. Unbelievable. A trillion from the time of the birth of Christ up until now, 2022. If you had spent one million every day, you would not have even hit a trillion. This is the degree of the debt. This is why they're proposing war, because it's always the way that they take the inductance out of the circuit, how they electrically discharge with the excuse of war, they eradicate the debt because it's all been stolen. The pension funds are empty. There is no money in the system apart from what they've stolen. And to cover it all so they don't have to pay, they don't have to pay for the road structures, they don't have to pay for your pensions, your medical treatment. What they do is they create wars to eliminate debt. The cycle goes on. Let's try and end it. Please pass this on to whoever you think might find it of interest and hit the subscribe button and press the bell for the notifications and I will be bringing you another update very very soon. Peter of England saying thank you for watching.